Well, welcome back to the studio. Today I'm working on a piece that's going to be a gift, a retirement gift for a first sergeant. My collector is, serves in the military and his first sergeant is retiring. And he served in the cavalry and at a time when horses were used rather than armored vehicles. So we're doing a horse in full cavalry gear. Uh, their unit flag is shown up here with the, the unit initials on there. We're having a first sergeant's uniform jacket draped over the McClellan saddle. So anyway, I've kind of tested my color mixtures to make sure they're exactly what I want. This is going to be a bay horse, and I'm using mixtures of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue. I've mixed into that some cadmium red light cadmium orange, and then for the lighter mixtures, I've added in white. So I go ahead and now using some of my darker mixtures, I begin painting in the shadows. I have already blocked in the horse. I, I sketched him in with a thin oil mixture of ultramarine blue of my mud, which is the two parts ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson plus liquid. I did that when I first, before I started painting. And so that's that purpley mix that I, you can see where I drew him in. And that's now dry, so if I make any mistakes or cover over something that I don't want to, to cover over, I can just go ahead and, and pull that brush off, or pull that off with my a clean brush. I'll show you. Like I just put some color right here. So I can swish my brush out in my Turpenoid Odorless Paint Thinner, and I can just lift that off. See how I can just keep cleaning my brush, but I can just lift that off and get back to my original drawing. I like to do this because by sketching it in with my oil wash, I can make sure that I have all the planes of the horse correct, the anatomy, everything. And all of my paintings I sketch in first with the mud mixture, then I come back and, and paint it. So I just, this is, now this is, I usually work with my bright brushes, brushes, which are a square tip. This brush is called a filbert. It has an oval shaped tip. And there's just some instances where I, I do like to use a brush that's a little different from my, my bright brushes. This is one of the few exceptions at a time like working on something like this. It's small and I can with that curved end it's easy to work around into the areas. This horse is going to have a, a little star and snip running down his face. You can see this brush just allows me to work in those areas. I love horses. Oh my gosh, I grew up ride, riding and my horse, I never... Uh, Rebel was, I saved up my babysitting money and got her for $125 at an auction. Uh, loved to, that, that horse was a, she was a trip. I mean, she was ornery, she was a kicker. I can't tell you how many people she kicked. She never kicked me. But, uh, oh my gosh, she was <laughs> to tie a ribbon in her tail if I was riding with anybody else so they'd know she'd kicked. But she was mine, and she was, she was my first horse, and I just loved her dearly. We used to laugh and say the only papers she ever had was the auction sticker on her hip. But she was, she taught me to ride, I'll tell you. <laughs> if you could have ridden her, you could stay on anything was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Rebel was my escape. She, she was my wings. I could just jump on her and go and just have a wonderful time. So I love horses and I first started painting horses. So this is, this is a fun commission. You can already see he's 
his face is starting to take shape. And this, this horse, actually, I love bay horses. Now, Rebel was a sorrel, kind of red-brown with a flaxen mane and tail. And, uh, which, if you're not a horse person, that means that her mane and tail were kind of a light creamy color. Not like a Palomino, which is a more yellow-toned horse with a white mane and tail. But Rebel was a sorrel. She was pretty horse. But now this horse, my second horse, was Barnum Bert. And I called him Barnum. He was a bay, and this is bays are really my favorites. I just I love the color combination. And so they they're deeper red brown with black mane and tail, black legs. Just beautiful. Beautiful color combination. And so I'm making this horse a bay. And Barnum also had a star and a stripe snip and a a star, which is up on the forehead, a stripe coming down the front of his his nose here, and then a snip, which is a larger little white spot on his nose. I guess this would be actually the bridge of his nose here. But um, so anyway, this brings brings back wonderful memories. He's a little roping horse, and just he was he loved to run. Oh my gosh. He would do anything I asked if, if the first thing I'd do when I got out to ride is let him run. And I'd let him run about half a mile, and then he'd be, he'd be happy. He'd say, okay, Mickey, whatever you want to do, I'll do. So he was, he was fun. Oh, I could just tell you horse stories all day long. But anyway, I love painting horses and... So this is a really, this is an extra special opportunity to, to get to paint another horse. Now I need to bring his nostril up on the left just a little bit to match this one. There we go. But you can see this, I'm just blocking in his face right now, blocking in his head. No, just getting the shapes and planes of his face all worked in there. This is, a, this is a small painting. It's 10 inches by 10 inches, so I have to use some fairly small brushes here. This brush, again, this is also a different shaped brush. This is called a round, and it gives a nice point. So just depending on on what you're working on, you have to use different brushes from time to time. Let's go ahead and bring that stripe down the front of his face here. Put his star in there. Now I'm not making this with pure white. I'm using white with a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in. part of that star is actually going to be in shadow from his forelock. The forelock is the, the part of the hair coming down over his face. This is the forelock here and then the mane is along their neck. This kind of gets us just bring this part into shadow. And then the snip, which is the part that white part that comes down over his nose, this comes right like so. If you'd like to follow this painting, the complete step-by-step -step process, just visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. And you can go there and see how it started and, and how I've gone, how the painting has progressed. I know a lot of people ask me, well, where's the rest of this painting? I want to see, you know, I want to see how it started, what you all did, what everything you did on it. 
And that's the place to go, is to my blog. Blog is, is www.mickeysincaric.wordpress.com. I'm going to bring a little red into his nostril because you see that and the nostrils are open wide like this. You can kind of see that red inside their, their nostril. Oh my gosh, I love horses' muzzles. They're so soft. The skin in this part of the right, like right in here, that skin is so soft on a horse. It's just... Arnim used to love to just have you scratch him right there. Good memories. This will be a little bit lighter right here. It's just a matter of working back and forth. I know also several of you have asked, well, we'd love to see you do a video of a painting you know, from start to finish, and I just, it'll take me almost all day just to finish this head with the bridle and everything, so I just can't do a video that long, so I, I show excerpts, and then like I say, you can go to my blog and, and see the, the completed, uh, you know, the a synopsis of the entire process. And I appreciate you watching. And also you may, you know, feel free to ask questions. You can make those in the comments section. Yeah. This you can see, it's just a lot of back and forth. I have my reference material taped to my easel to the right of the the right of my little panel. And so I just keep working back and forth and I really appreciate you watching today, and just please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to my blog, and just be safe. Please remember to wear your mask when you go out. You know, not only are you protecting yourself, but you're protecting other people. And with this virus, we just don't know, you know, if, if somebody has been exposed or not, because people can be absolutely feel perfectly fine and have no fever and yet be carriers of the virus and be infecting people. So please remember to wear your masks and social distance. I know it's hard. I'm a natural born hugger, so it uh, this has been so hard not to, to hug people and but it's it's all part of our life right now. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day and thank you again for watching my YouTube videos.